Hey people, what's up? I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to share with you some of my workflow hacks that I use to increase my productivity in Ableton Live. So I'll show you some pro tips and tricks on how to create your own perfect Ableton template. Let's go. So this is what Ableton opens up by default. We have two empty MIDI tracks, two empty audio tracks, and a couple of return tracks. So the first thing that I want to do before actually starting to build the template is build a basic audio effects track, which is going to be composed of several effects that I know I'm pretty much always going to be using on every track. First thing I'm going to throw on there is an EQ8 because I always want some sort of EQ on my track. Next, I'm going to grab Ableton Saturator and then a compressor. And whether that's for dynamic control or side chaining, it's great to have that on there. And last, I'm going to throw on Ableton's Utility. And this is always the last effect in my chain, because if I want to automate the gain or the volume, I like to use this knob rather than the fader. And it's also great to check how your track sounds in mono versus stereo to make sure it's not going to completely disintegrate if you change from stereo to mono. And once you're happy with everything in your chain, you can shift select all of them together and hit control G to group them or put them into an audio effect rack. If you want to take this a step further, we can actually come up to this button here and open our macro controls. Macros allow you to affect multiple parameters at the same time, which can be super useful and time-saving. So a simple and useful example of mapping a macro could be using the saturator. So normally when we turn up the drive, we also want to decrease the output so we're not just gaining volume. So to map to a macro, we just hit this map button here, and then we click on the parameters we want to map. So I clicked on drive, and we'll hit map under macro 1, and then I'll click on output and also map that to macro 1 as well. And once I have that, I'm going to come up here to this little triangle and open this menu that gives us our macro mappings. And what this is, is it actually gives us a little bit more control about the actual values that this macro can control. So let's go ahead and change the minimum value on the drive to zero rather than negative 36. And then I want that output to actually be the inverse or opposite of what the drive is doing. So it's mitigating the volume. So let's change the minimum to zero as well. And then for the maximum, I actually want that to be negative 36. And now if we come down here to this macro, you can see that it's actually controlling the drive and the output in an inverse way. So they're working together. And once you have everything set up the way you want it, all you have to do is drag that and drop it into your user library, call it whatever you want, and it's ready to go anytime you need it. You can also create some pretty crazy parallel processing effect racks and save those just like that basic audio rack we made. Next pro tip, setting up default settings for plugins and MIDI tracks. So an example of a default preset that I use a lot is maybe putting a high pass on most of my tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and I'll put it to a frequency about there. And then what I want to do is right click on the top bar of this plugin and you'll have this option to save as default preset. Now, every time that I load this EQ8, it's already going to have that high pass loaded on there for me. And this works with third party plugins too. You can also save MIDI track default settings as well. So I'm going to right click on this MIDI track that already has my rack loaded on it. I'm going to save it as the default. And now anytime I load a new MIDI track, everything is already loaded on there for me. Another thing I have set on all of my default templates is a piano loaded up as my first MIDI instrument. So that way, as soon as I open Ableton, if I have a melody in my head, I can jump in there, get it put down before I forget it. Next tip for that perfect template is making sure everything is color coded and labeled. Color coding is super simple. Just come up to the track you want to change, right click, and you can pick from any of these colors. I keep most of my melodic instruments in purple or pink. And then all of my drums are always going to be this light blue, so they're easy to pick out when I'm looking through a bunch of tracks. And then of course, naming them for what instrument it is, is also super helpful. Next is setting up a group or bus for similar instruments so that you can process them all together. Creating groups or buses for instruments is super simple. It's just like an audio effect rack. You click on the first one you'd like, shift, click on the last one, control G, and now they are in a group or bus. And I just like to change the color so it matches. And then you can add more processing to process them all together. I usually like an EQ, maybe a glue compressor, maybe a saturator kind of up to you and what you'd like to put on there. You should also be using Ableton's collections option to save your favorite instruments, effects, samples, basically anything that you use all the time so you know exactly where it is and it's easy to grab it. So let's talk about what I put on my master channel. Not a whole lot. I keep it pretty clean because I don't actually master in the same project file as my mixing. So the only things I have by default on my master track are utility and a limiter. And one of the things I like to do is utilize Ableton's key mapping function to actually map that mono button to a key on my keyboard. So it's super easy to go back and forth between stereo and mono for my entire song. 
So in enter key and mapping mode, just hit control K and pretty much anything in orange is something that you can map to pretty much any key on your keyboard. So I'm gonna press on the mono button and then I'm gonna map that to the backslash key. That's what I'm gonna pick. And so once I do that, I'll hit control K again to exit key mapping mode. And now anytime I press that backslash, super easy to toggle that on and off. So once you have your template all set up, come up to file and you have a couple options. You can save it as a template, which means it'll save it in your user preferences so you can load it up anytime you need it. Or you can save it as the default setting, which means anytime you open Ableton, that's going to be what opens up for you. Last workflow hack, make a lot of templates. I make a lot of different genres of music, so I actually have a different template for each genre depending on what I'm gonna make that day. So this is my house music template. As you can see, I already have the tempo set. I have all of the instruments, all of the drum samples that I normally use for house music. All of my return tracks are color coded and ready to go. And pretty much I can sit down and know that I have the things that I need to make a house track. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed, please do remember to hit that like button, subscribe for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.